worship at First Baptist Church Brantford, and we welcome all who are joining us online. Thank you to all who are participating in our service. And now, let us worship God. The psalmist writes, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Our opening hymn of praise, Jesus shall reign. is printed, let us pray together. O oh God, defender of the poor and needy, we thank you for your vision of a community of wholeness, a realm of peace, in which all who hunger and thirst are nourished, in which the stranger is welcomed, the hurting are healed, and the captive set free. Guide us by your truth and love until we and all your people make manifest your reign of justice and compassion. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Today's scripture lesson is from Matthew chapter 5, selected verses. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, 
for they will be for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed, blessed are those who, per, who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when all people reveal and persecute you and all other kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven, for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. You are the light of the world. Let your light shine before others, so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. Our responsive reading, the words of Psalm 72, as printed. Give the king your justice, O God, and your righteousness to the royal heir. May he judge your people with righteousness and your poor with justice. May the mountains yield prosperity for the people and the hills in righteousness. May he defend the cause of the poor of the people, give deliverance to the needy, and crush the oppressor. May he live while the sun endures, and as long as the moon, throughout all generations. May he be like rain that falls on the mown grass, like showers that fall to you. In his days, may righteousness flourish and peace abound, until the moon is no more. May he have dominion from sea to sea, and from the river to the ends of the earth. May his foes bow down before him, and his enemies lick the dust. May the rulers of Tarshish and the isles pay tribute. May the kings of Sheba and Seba bring gifts. May all kings fall down before him, and all nations give him service. For he delivers the needy when they cry, the poor, and those who have no helper. He has pity on the weak and the needy, and saves the lives of the needy. From oppression and violence he redeems their life, and precious is their blood in his sight. Long may he live, may gold of sheep be given to him. May prayer be made for him continually, and blessings invoked for him all day long. May there be abundance of rain in the land. May it wave on the tops of the mountains. May its fruit be like Lebanon. And may people blossom in the cities like the grass of the field. May his name endure forever. His fame continue as long as the sun. May all nations be blessed in him. May they pronounce him blessed. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who alone does wondrous things. Blessed be God's glorious name forever. May the glory of the Lord fill the whole earth. Amen and amen. The Psalms are some of the most personal words in the Bible. They speak directly to our human experience and give voice to so many of the emotions and feelings, struggles, joys, and challenges of our lives. Our focus today is Psalm 72. It is one of nine royal psalms, psalms which are concerned with the office or vocation of kingship. Psalm 72 describes the character of an ideal king, or for our modern ears, an ideal government. It was sung or prayed as part of a coronation ceremony or on the anniversary of the king's accession. Specifically, 72 is a prayer for the reign of God to be realized 
through the reign of a human king. Structurally, the psalm has five sections, including a doxology that serves as a conclusion to the psalm and book two of the Psalter. 72 carries the superscription or title of Solomon. Give the king your justice, O God, and your righteousness to a king's son. May he judge your people with righteousness and your poor with justice. To help us appreciate this psalm, we need to explore two biblical concepts, kingship and justice and righteousness. In the first book of Samuel, we read the account of the Israelite elders going to Samuel and demanding that he appoint a king to rule over them. After much deliberation and prayer from Samuel and much grumbling from the people, God told Samuel, listen to their voice and set a king over them. Some of the kings are more familiar to us than others. Saul was anointed by Samuel as the first king of Israel. The successor to Saul was David. King David created a strong, unified monarchy, defeating enemies and creating secure boundaries for the people. The follower to David's reign was Solomon, known for his great gift of wisdom. Solomon's rule was noted as a period of peace and prosperity. Solomon's son, Rehoboam, taxed the people heavily and created impossible burdens for the people. Some rebelled and the country was split into two kingdoms, Israel and Judah. As we read through the scriptures, we realize how significant the monarchy became and how there was a series of either faithful or unfaithful kings, those who followed God and those who disobeyed and went after other gods or who used kingship to further their own wants, desires, and ambitions. The key to understanding Psalm 72 is the connection of leadership to justice and righteousness. The king is the chief instrument by which God's rule is executed on earth. The king bears ultimate responsibility for justice and civil order. The qualities of justice and righteousness provide the bedrock on which the king's reign is built. In the Bible, justice and righteousness are not abstract or intellectual concepts, but rather real moral forces or spheres of activity or power which get realized in everyday life and in how society works. Justice is the term for God's desired state of affairs where all people are treated equitably. A society is just to the degree to which every person has enough and is lifted up. The greatness of a king is measured not by military might or gold in the treasury, but by whether the cause of the poor is defended, whether the needy are delivered. Righteousness is being in sync with God's ways, embodying God's steadfast love and mercy. It is a matter of living the covenant of mutual respect, of honoring all people, and of helping the poor. The writer of 72 asserts that when justice and righteousness characterize the reign of the king, then peace and prosperity will be present. 
Only in the presence of justice and righteousness will the world operate as God intends, yielding universal shalom or peace. And such a reign will attract the loyalty of the whole earth. The just and righteous king will have dominion from one end of the earth to the other. Kings from the known world will pay homage because of his compassionate care for all. Again, the psalmist emphasizes the connection between the success of the king's reign and his commitment to justice for the vulnerable. Now, you and I know that no king, no ruler, no leader could or can meet the standards set out in Psalm 72. Neither David nor Solomon or any of their successors lived up to the ideals set out here. There will always be disparities between the actual operations of government and the ideal of God's reign. Human self-interest and power cloud vision and decision-making. Our own nation, Canada, got its formal name, Dominion of Canada, and its Latin motto, From Sea to Sea, from the King James Version of verse 8. But we know well that our country has not lived out the vision of justice contained within this psalm. The reality has fallen far short of the words. Yet Psalm 72 is not just an ideal. It is a prayer. Give the king your justice, O God. May he judge your people with righteousness. May he defend the cause of the poor. And this is where this psalm provides guidance for us today. For within it, there is a word for all of us about leadership and what it means to be just and righteous. We have leaders on all sorts of levels. Some are very powerful and have much influence over our lives. Psalm 72 gives them both a calling and a challenge towards justice and righteousness in the large complex issues of our day. But there is a word here for each one of us. We all have the ability and the potential to unleash these forces in our own lives, in our employment, in our neighborhoods, in our volunteer roles and retirement pursuits, as parents and grandparents and family members, as a community of faith and witness. We are leaders, individually and collectively, and we are called to align ourselves with God's justice and righteousness flowing into our world. We do so when we bring peace when we care for those who are disadvantaged, when we notice and name injustices, when we stand with those who are oppressed. We do so when we admit and confess our own involvement in unjust systems and we work for change, when we speak up in an unfair situation, when we practice acts of kindness when we support an organization working for change in our community, we do so when we join that flow of justice and righteousness that ultimately comes from God. Seen in this vision and in this light, Psalm 72 becomes how we are to live our lives. Christians often read this psalm on the day of Epiphany, January 6th, 
The image of a king who cares for the people and redeems them is a familiar one to us. We believe that the fulfillment of God's justice and righteousness is seen in the life and ministry of Jesus, the Christ. As followers of Jesus, we are all called and commissioned to share in Christ's reign, to seek righteousness, justice and mercy, and to celebrate that the embodiment of sovereign power has been incarnated in Jesus, bringing light that can never be extinguished. Friends, as the glory of God is revealed to us and through us, we too are the ones to proclaim and ensure that God's reign of justice and righteousness will be there and will reign forever and ever. May the whole world be filled with this vision, O oh God. Thanks be to God. Amen.
In the book of Hebrews, we read, Do not neglect to do good and to share what you have, for such sacrifices are pleasing to God. There are offering plates at the doors, and you're invited to place your offering at end of service. Let us pray for the offering. You have nurtured us, O God, sheltered us, and fed us by your love. As we have been given, may we give freely, fully, and thankfully for our many blessings. Amen. Let us continue in prayer. Loving God, we are gathered this day in fellowship to celebrate your goodness and love and to open ourselves anew to receiving the affirmations of your grace. You have made us. You have shaped our beginnings, called us into life, into relationships, and into the church. You give us the unwavering call to do justice. Endow us with wisdom, knowledge, and understanding that we may work for justice and righteousness. Challenge us to become courageous advocates for truth and justice, to stand up for those on the margins of society, to be a voice for those who are rarely heard. Make us channels of your peace, bearers of healing, people who hear and respond to pleas for justice in our world. Give all people the desire to work to bring an end to oppression. O oh God, we ask that your gifts of healing, faith, hope, and love would be with the people and situations we name before you now. We pray for those whose lives touch ours each day, family members, friends, neighbors who need our prayers. You know the heart of each one and you understand the particular need of each. We pray for your healing presence in the lives of those who are ill and those struggling to recover and return to health. We remember those who mourn. Grant them the knowledge that your everlasting arms surround them and may they know that neither life nor death can separate us from your love. We pray, pray for our political leaders and for the nations of the world that the hearts of all humans will turn from the ways of destruction and war and may instead be filled with the compassion to create and to build and to make fair and beautiful. We pray for the people around the world devastated by natural disaster. We remember all persons and organizations who are reaching out to provide for needs. Shelter those who are bereft of their homes. Give solace to those who have lost so much. And now in silence, we bring to you our most intimate concerns. O Lord, we praise your name forever. May the whole earth be filled with your glory. We ask all these things in the name of Christ Jesus, who taught his disciples to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our concluding hymn, Let Truth and Mercy Find Here.
and the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you forever. Amen.